Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. We're building this farmhouse bench. Great place for the kids to put their shoes on in the morning before they head out to school. Excellent place for them to drop their backpacks when they come home at night. Super easy to build. Matter of fact, it's easier to put together than putting together an IKEA uh, shelf. Doesn't take too much in terms of materials. I need one 8 foot 1 by 12 and one 8 foot 1 by 6. Some simple tools. Ready to assemble. Okay, let's take you over and start cutting material. So out of the 8 foot 1 by 12, I'm cutting the first piece, which is going to be a 38 inch long uh, piece for the seat. Then I'll cut up <coughs> two 17 and a half inch pieces for the legs. Now, out of the 1 by 6, I had to cut two 38 inch pieces. Okay, everything's been uh, cut to size. Now I have to put bevels up my, on my uh, legs. Make sure when you're doing this operation that you keep the bevels going the same direction. If you mess up, you're going to be buying a new piece of wood or, quite frankly, you can make it just a little bit shorter. So my saw is already set at 10 degrees. I used a uh, waxy digital uh, uh, angle meter. If you don't have one and you have a table saw, I highly recommend you get one. There will be a link at the bottom. Critical thing, make sure these two pieces are identical and exactly the same on top. They have to be the exact same length, otherwise your, uh, your uh, bench is going to be off kilter, unlevel, and it probably will rock. So precision here is very, very important. So parts are all cut, we're ready to go. At this point, I want to do some layout, when lay out my curves. I'm going to take the curves out of here, take a check plans. Uh, they're in the link below. You'll have to go to my blog to download those. It's a five and a half inch radius, roughly. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to use this top, lay the top end tangent here at about four inches, rock it to the right spot, and it should be good. Um, one thing I do want, however, is I want to make sure that, that this cutout actually is flush with the underside of the uh, bench. So, to do that, all I'm going to do is use that as a marking spot. Pretty easy to do. Hold it up. Put a mark. And I only have to mark the top one because I'm going to tape these two together and then cut them out simultaneously. Makes it way easier. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'll put this about four and a half inches roughly. Just so I know. And there you have it. Far easier, <coughs> pardon me, far easier than setting up a travel and trying to come up with the exact curve. So, at this point, I'm going to grab some tape, tape these together at a jigsaw, and I'll show you how to cut these things out. I don't know if I mentioned how handy this Gerber uh, knife is. 
uses an X-Acto blade. I'll put a link at the bottom. This thing is phenomenal. Oh my gosh. It's like having a... Uh, like having a box cutter in your pocket all the time. We've got these perfectly lined up, top, bottom, and sides. A little bit of pressure. Only way to get, get these things apart now is with a uh, screwdriver or a chisel to prime apart. Now, Grab my jigsaw, and I'll be right back. Okay, jigsaw in hand, piece is secured. Make sure you're always wearing safety glasses and uh, hearing protection anytime you use power tools. Uh, as you cut this, make sure you're not cutting into your bench, and the piece is secured. So, we'll just cut these things out real fast. Okay, with these cutouts done, it's a perfect time to go ahead and hit these with a sander. I'm going to go use my rigid belt sander and take care of these curves. With these all sanded off, we're ready to start assembly. A couple more operations we have to do before we start assembly. Uh, this particular board has a number of knots. They're pretty tight, but quite frankly, it looks like over time, they'll probably get loose. So I'm gonna super glue these things in. So I have some CA, CA glue I'm gonna hit them with. And then I'm gonna have to come back and cut a hand hole in the center. So I've dropped my holes in here, one inch holes with a one inch speed board, and I've laid out the uh, tangent lines so I can cut those out with a jigsaw. Let's cut it out. Now with a little bit of filing and sanding, the hole will be done. So we laid out our handle slot, drilled a couple of one inch holes with a speed bore, uh, took a jigsaw and uh, basically connected those two and made a nice slot, sanded or filed and sanded that out. Feels really good, perfect size for a hand. Uh, now we're ready to do some glue up. So we're dry fit, everything's snugged up, nice and gentle. Everything's looking really good. Uh, what I've done inside you can't see is I actually Marked off where the uh, legs sit because I'm gonna. That's where I'm applying the glue. I'm gonna keep the glue somewhat restricted. Um, I don't want to starve the joint, but I really don't want to have too much slop. So I got those marked out. Uh, next thing is glue up. Glue up. I hope you guys are as excited about it as I am. This is always the part of the project where everything comes together. So let's get busy.
So what I'm doing here basically is just scrubbing the joint back and forth. That can tell me where my glue, where I have dry spots in the glue. And we're ready to start clamping. Okay, clamps are snug. Gonna put a few more on and then I'm gonna hit it with some nails. Okay, clamps are off. Looking really good. The edges matched up really well. If yours didn't, you may have some sanding to do here. Uh, make sure you take off all the little glue nibs, both on top, and then come under the bottom and pick all those off. At this point, the next thing we want to do is round all these edges. So, I'm going to go grab a router with an 8 inch router around it for a bit. I'll be back in a second. And there we have it. A little more sanding on a few more edges here, just because I couldn't get quite close enough with my router bit into these uh, into these edges underneath here. Uh, and then she'll be ready for stain and finish. So, completed all the sanding, sanded all the all the surfaces, broken all the edges that I that I did uh, round over like along the end, along the legs here. Uh, made sure all the spots that I couldn't get to with the router down in here are all good. Nice soft radius so if somebody grabs it, wherever they grab it, it'll be nice and soft. Now it's ready for finish. I've wiped the whole thing down. I'm going to be using a special dark uh, walnut to give it kind of an antique look. It's pretty, you notice it's pretty bright white right now. This is a vine. <coughs> and then I'll finish it off with a uh, clear satin polyurethane. A couple coats of that and uh, they're highly durable. Kids can sit on it for years. It won't wear off. I won't bore you with all the details and finishing, but we'll come back and take a look at it when I'm done. Well, the final coat of satin's on it. It's been rubbed out with 4 hot steel wool and it's silky smooth. I'd say this project is done. Ready for the kids to sit, put their boots on heading off to school, or drop their backpacks when they come home. I've had a lot of fun building this project and hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking as long as you have. In the bottom, there's links both the materials, some of the materials and some of the tools I've used, and also the plans. So feel free to go explore those. And until next time, folks, good making.